Work with me live a part of Work with me season 2 series where I bring in amazing guests to have heartfelt conversations. For our third episode we have Ramesh Prasad Ar who is an international NLP coach who travels across the globe impacting thousands of life with NLP. He's an amazing personality who touched so many lives in so many ways. The topic we will be discussing upon is what, where and how. Catch us live in my Instagram stream at 7 p.m. See you all there. person to talk about self awareness and about emotions than ramesh prasad sir it is an honor to have you with us today ramesh prasad is an international nlp coach who is trained across uh, the globe who travels every day uh, meeting thousands of people impacting thousands of lives helping them get through their lives and making their lives just a little bit better with his unique style and with his amazing tools of nlp thank you so much sir for joining us thank you thank you for having me here i just want to check are you able to hear me loud and clear i am able to hear you loud and clear if you keep the camera just like that it will be perfect okay perfect so yeah good yeah, evening you guys, thank you say that again uh if uh, i was just telling the audience if you guys can hear send a thumbs up so that we get a feedback yes carry on so i would say uh, a proper good evening to you and uh, i would say it's a privilege to be joining you uh i i do know the kind of work which you do uh, across india uh, particularly in karnataka but across india how you go on to be physically available uh to support to uplift to bring in awareness whether it is social or the girl child or any kind of a place where you want to put your message across uh how you are have the um, chosen to step out in places where very few do so i would say it's a privilege uh, bishop uh, to join you uh, to be invited by you in fact yes thank you thank you so much sir uh, ramesh sir i was actually little bit uh, scared to approach you for this particular platform because you uh, address some of the global leaders and here i am with a bunch of my students bunch of my people with a uh, very small little community that we am trying to build through instagram you so gracefully agreed to be a part of this thank you so much uh, the whole uh, sh- the show level itself got up because of you thank you so much for being there um, and so nice words from you and uh, most of my work most of my inspiration comes from nlp and before we sort of uh, throw in nlp and terms like that let us uh, sort of step it down to the people so that they can go step by step and uh, that can be possible only if we understand how you started off so how did your journey begin <laughs> well uh, before i share my journey um i also think it's uh, fair to say that uh, uh, what do i do currently is a little bit about what i do currently and then i'll yes. tell you so uh, of course uh, nlp is uh, the work which i do nlp is full form is called as neuro linguistic programming and um, for me getting into the space of nlp was an accident about uh, it's almost uh, 12 years ago uh, prior to that i work for uh, so that's what i do currently and i do my workshops i do training i do coaching um, across india in different cities i also have been fortunate to get invited to sri lanka to bangladesh and i make it a point to visit once in a year uh france or the uk uh, so that's a little bit about my background in terms of the work i do i, got, I, I am married to my wife tulsi i've yes. got a beautiful daughter uh, gayantrika who is just 2 years and 5 months and of course that's another story in fact yeah so uh, that's a little bit about my background and uh, i i come from a very nice uh, french town called pondicherry that's where i grew up i was born i had my education so you yeah, know that's a little bit about my background i should say so your question was how did i get started off yes how did everything start yes so how did uh, this journey start i would say uh, it was an uh, it, it was not planned 
it was not like so a lot of people say you have to plan out stuff and you have to do things this way uh, i think i did that for a long time in my life i was a very good planner and a very good executor uh, which i did for the corporate world so for for almost for about 17 yeah 17 or 19 odd years i worked for the corporate and i think uh, i uh, i i really planned my job well my career well in such a way that i achieved a lot of things in my career corporate world and the fact is being the eldest in the family i had to support my dad money was important so got quickly into a job performance is very the key the, the key factor in corporate so i did a good job in that as well so awards rewards recognition all that kind of fell in place and that i that i think it continued for a long time in my life uh somewhere down the line when i thought i was uh, full i had fulfilled all my obligations and uh, responsibilities i came to a place where i said okay i don't want the awards i don't want the recognition then what the hell do i want and the search of what is that i really want uh, helped me to step into different places i didn't know that my calling would be in the space of nlp i would say so that's how it began about i think it was in 2008 no 2009 it all began i should say yeah. and i took uh, small steps uh, not knowing where i am getting into because in those days nlp was not uh, people didn't know much even i didn't know uh, so not knowing what is nlp not having much choices in india uh, i stepped into a space uh, uh i just trusted my intuition so if you guys are out there and uh, if you feel this is what you want to do go ahead and do it because when you trust the your intuition it really gives you what you really want and i never uh, i found my calling there i would say yeah so that's a little bit about the work with that's how i got started out from the shake lovely thank you so much for sharing that particular story and there is a sub story within that guys in one of the uh, conferences that i attended of uh, ramesh prasad sir he shared the story of him going in search of an nlp master and uh, where he found that master at last so uh, how gracefully he said if there is an intuition go in search of it you will find it i want him to share sir if you could share as to how the search was and where did you end up finding <laughs> well it was difficult uh, i'm using the word difficult because uh, like if like if you go back to some of the words that abdul kalam says it is difficult or it's tough to find a master or a mentor uh, but if you find them if you really find them then grab hold of them yes uh, because these guys are dangerous people they can change your life <laughs> and i think uh, i so i didn't know that till i found somebody uh, so for almost for a year i procrastinated i was not very sure because it cost a lot of money also in those days and i didn't have anybody to guide me what is uh, nlp all about um, so i went uh, I, i went out to people whom i knew and asked them hey guys have you heard of nlp do you know what's all about it though we had like a bit of the bookish stuff but i did not have anybody who can tell me hey this is an lp you can go for it or something like that and the more i didn't find answers the more i had questions i became curious but somewhere you know deep inside i felt like maybe i'm not finding answers is for me to find the answers like what the hell is this stuff all an lp and who are the people who run this training are there any trained and teachers and so on So the story goes like that that I was willing to fly off to UK uh, to learn did I have the money no I didn't have the money uh hi sapa uh, yeah so I didn't have the money and I I know this Prashant there moved there sapa there so hi guys all of you welcome yeah since we have post uh, hi all thank you so much for joining uh, do I'm drop in your now. questions Yeah, hi Vaishnav is also the it is Vaish Vaishnavi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very well. Let's have a thorough look at all the people who are there. 
all right uh, okay i'll take your song request and all later man okay perfect please continue yes so um, um uh, so i was willing to take a huge risk if you had to say to uh, say okay let me go to uk uh, did i have the money no i didn't have the money and uh, i want to do something very crazy i thought i'll sell off something a property of mine which will and all the stuff anyway my wife was there the wise lady who said you don't know what's nlp you don't know uh, the story behind it then you want to do or take a, such a huge risk how about taking one step at a time so is there somebody in india i said there is somebody in delhi who does so i sign up for his program and ultimately i sign up with uh, sunight as well at the same time and i stepped into a place where i didn't know what is an lp i didn't know ashok i didn't know sapa so i didn't know sunight <laughs> i didn't know sunight and i was thinking like okay what's happening here but you know what it took a while and i find this uh, with most of my delegates who come to my workshop they get confused like uh, what's happening in other nadakadin gear like that way like uh, so day one goes day two goes day three goes a lot lot more questions getting into a space of confusion and all that uh, but ultimately i think it was on the 6th or the 7th day i found uh my answers to some of the questions which i had and they are very 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 powerful and it was transformational it was very emotional for me and when i found answers to those questions i moved to a different phase of my life so yeah in that way it was a journey finding the right uh, teacher or the right master and today um, my teacher my master my mentor is so nice who is uh, who's uh, who's uh, um, very gracious very giving very sharing uh, she has been in the space of nlp for almost 30 35 years a very active person very gen what do you call uh, very enthusiastic active and uh, strong fit there are so many words that yeah, she is a role model in that way for me just to let you know if you're an indian if you're watching this she is only 72 but i can promise you you just can't even walk beside her because that is her fitness and even today i find that uh, I, I, she inspires me in many many ways so, yeah so that's my journey in terms of finding a teacher yeah, yeah. and and the story goes that the first uh, person who you ever attended you travel till delhi just to find out he just stays two three streets away from your house yes so <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of the belief is like hey uh, the uh, you need not travel far off it is right in your backyard so when <laughs> i and i think i sat on it for almost a year finding a teacher and a trainer but uh, so ashok and his larger family uh, which is his brothers they live in tinagar where i used to live earlier and they were just a couple of buildings away in my backyard so one of the statement is hey you need not travel far it is just just there where you are the oil yes. is in my backyard you just need to look back and they can yes. you will find it Yes. and that belief actually resonated a lot with me because uh, i found a lot of thing a lot of answer to this questions in that space like hey it's here it's not very here far away in fact yeah. it's here close on the view and why i brought that story up is because we are all kind of stuck in our backyards with the whole quarantine uh, situation that we are all sitting here and uh, there are two sides to the same coin one is that there is one way of looking at it that hey i cannot go out i cannot go out i can't do things that i normally do and b this opportunity has suddenly opened up to two worlds one a world inside us as to there are so many people there are so many people messaging me there are so many people sharing too many things that they are not able to like bear themselves they are not able to bear their family they were so busy working that they have not formed a connection with their family and second and they are not found a connection with themselves also and there is a second possibility that it suddenly opens up to a whole new world in the touch of a button we are suddenly connected to every single person who is sitting at home yes so um, so if if you have any piece of 
let's say uh, thoughts or advice for people who are sitting at home how they have to look at these two worlds that is uh, in front of them right now uh my take away is like for example um, i'm sure a lot of people relate to this is uh, uh it is like a lot of people still have a lot i'm say, i'm talking of the generation yes and a good amount of population which still chooses to keep away from the digital world or the online world uh and uh, then there are people like the the people who are primarily on instagram like they're all like hey like there's a lot of life um <laughs> 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 but okay <laughs> yeah. but from there in fact uh, i think i was the last guy to join instagram because when i go to instagram i find a lot of pictures and like my brother's daughter who's a teenager herself uh people like her and most of the younger really really younger generation they're all in instagram and uh, i would say that uh, um i i took a i took a while to connect then yes. that space and today do i have a choice <laughs> yep <laughs> so uh so it's like people are available so and the fact is the the people who are on instagram are the uh, it's only a medium i do understand but are the people are the future of whatever holds to do and and the fact is like somebody said i remember a lady from madurai her name is sharmila devi she said and, I, and that line resonates she said we are the people who are responsible for giving internet to the future generation to people who are working wherever they are so i think uh, it's important that we teach them educate them and the value of it and how to use it right and i think we yeah, are that, that's how it is in fact we developed it we have given into it so i think i learned in that space like how do i learn to embrace uh, technology uh, embrace coming online for me uh, coming online off late it is uh, i would say it's something new for a lot of people it's just like that it happens at like they get like you you are a master in fact you come in very easily start speaking and uh, for me it uh, it takes a while i i am like any normal guy i said no i it's okay let's let's do this uh, differently but just to come here online and speak and connect uh, and just to uh, value uh, people coming here for me I think um um I think it's uh, like I said it's a, it's a, it's a, it's not only a learning for me but it's also a um blessing that hey you can learn to adapt you can learn to live uh with with, with new ways with new people in new ways you see yeah so I would say both the worlds like we say it is not this or that it is uh, both uh yes, yes. Yes. So both the, both the worlds are important, and I think as Indians generally, um, generalizing it, uh, we are good uh, uh, with what our forefathers are given and whatever that comes across. Uh, and I think that is the reason why most people in the IT world are successful. Inna pannaalam, thayir saan sabdaan tu forum liya like that way. So. Um, let's let's get into a more uh, rapid and more content based you know uh, conversation so the question yeah. that i really wanted to ask and i want this to go to as many people and who better than you to answer this particular question if there is one belief system or one thought that we have to wake up with during this lockdown what would that be um one belief system oh my god that uh, there are a good number um so what resonates with me is uh, something called so the one of the beliefs uh, in nlp uh, the, the statement goes like this for people who know nlp they are familiar with it but for people who do not know the statement goes like this uh, you have within you you have within you all the resources that you need to be uh doing whatever you want to be doing wherever you want to be doing so if i give to give you an example of this statement you have all the resources within you to do to become whatever you want to do whatever you want wherever ever you want whom up so you want if you believe that you have the resource capability skills then it will definitely work for you 
I have a couple of examples. Um, I so when we when we study um, primarily as knowledge, you know. Okay, I know, I know the statement. You have all the resources within you. But then uh, um, I happened to work for the uh, with my teacher in the initial days a bit closely, and that was the first time when I was in the UK where I was uh, there as an observer. Uh, looking at, I was already a trainer, but uh, I was just observing how Sue does what she does. And uh, it was, I, I believe, a seven-day program or eight-day program. And uh, because I was, as a, I was a new trainer, an LP trainer, I wanted to actually learn. So I was making notes, I was writing down stuff, like how she is doing, what she is doing, and so on. Till it hit me, in, I think on the fourth day. Oh my God! This whatever I'm doing is uh, definitely not useful because I am seeing Sue only operating with one of the belief that my participants over here. So the belief goes like my participants over here. They have all the resources within them to learn the way they want to learn. Okay. And Sue Knight was somebody who was facilitating it in such a way that people chose to learn from each other. I it hit like a bolt, and I said, "Oh my God, that's something very, very." Uh, till then, I thought I knew it in terms of a quote, but for me to see somebody applying it, uh, change uh, change uh, my belief in terms. Of, okay, how do I go about working in spaces where I'm not sure? Uh, that okay, people have the resources within them to connect to do whatever they want. Of course, it starts with self, and then it goes on to others. Yes. So when I look back, when I look back today in this moment, uh, I think I've been fortunate to say yes to people, uh, especially when we are talking. Like for example, saying yes to you and coming online. I always think, do I have the resources to be there? How do I prepare myself? Is there something which I have to prepare? Um, I also look back in these terms of uncertainty. How is that I am managing my space? How is the day planned? Uh, I'm, uh, and then there's definitely a lot of new things happening in the space. Just before coming online to you, I was uh, uh, like me. So uh, we are a little family. It's me, Tulsi, and Gayantika. We were uh, doing our uh, about uh, half an hour of uh, exercise, which is really physical exercise, uh, stretching, sitting, and pulling. So and my daughter as well joins us. Uh, so it's it's fun actually. <laughs> uh, so we have a we have a routine. We have a schedule, and I work on that schedule, which keeps me motivating. And asking myself this question: Okay, what is that I can do new today? In fact, uh, just to let you know, other than what coming online, I have uh, designed a series of uh, lessons which are going to go live in the next oh, wow. uh, few weeks. Yes. Um, so there is a lot of stuff I'm going to be uh, sharing. Um, I'm just uh, I'm just curious, like how do I go about it? But I know there are people who are wanting to learn. It can be as simple as clean language, or provocative coaching. Yes. Or, yeah. There's a whole lot of uh, stuff available, and this is a nice time for me to say, okay, let's go ahead, put it out, and see what we can learn from each other. And okay. uh, the, yeah, the idea is not to teach. The idea is to. Uh, explore, find out, and can, and me as a me as somebody over there, can I facilitate in such a way that people know? Okay, this is uh, yeah. So okay. says somebody is saying good question, Papu. You, I'll take the questions. Don't get distracted by them. <laughs> huh? I'll take the questions. Okay, uh, sorry. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm just uh, take. Okay, lovely. Uh, so something new. Something more, uh, things that you have always wanted to do. Once we start exploring, the world is a possibility. So the next question, let's try and take more and more as much as possible. Um, so uh, already sent in your story. Oh yeah, let me ask a beautiful question. What does success mean to you? I think that's a very. <laughs> Hi, Nachi. Nachi, one of my classmates, schoolmate is there. Oh wow! So, wow. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So, what does success mean to me? I think uh, it's it's changed over a period of time. It has changed at different points. It was different stuff. Uh, for a long time, when I was in the corporate world, in the business world, 
uh, performance and all those things are important and and the moment you do something phenomenal you get recognized that was success i would say um but then uh, when when you when you when it kind of over a period of time you are getting used to it then i say okay uh, is this what you really want that kind of stuff so i wouldn't uh, I wouldn't go by the word success today. Uh, it's, I find that uh, it's. Um, I would go by the word experience. So if I like, yeah, if I like what I'm doing in the space, uh, for me that is much more significant rather than the word success. So if I like the journey, then that for me is success rather than the destination itself. So success is very very relative and. Uh, uh yeah we can say people are uh, he is successful she is successful yes uh, for me um, i think the journey taking the journey and being there with you in the journey that's more important i would say yeah brilliant brilliant success is a journey and uh, one of the quotes that i read and i resonate with that very well uh, like you said success is not the destination it is from where you start and how you go and where you pause and yes. where you start again such a such an amazing uh, quote that was okay let's move on to the next one uh, one moment that meant the most to you so past this one moment in your life that means the most to you um one moment that meant the most to me oh my god there are lots lots of them um lots of them mm. okay let's take two Hang on, hang on, and find out. There's a lot more. Okay. Uh, um, uh, I think uh, so. The fact is, when you talk about moments, uh, uh, for me, uh, there are lo- lots, lots, uh, there are lots of moments like that. Uh, I'll go to uh, one of the moments when I said yes to my wife. I remembered I had a session with my teachers uh, they coached me uh, because I was resisting certain things in that space and uh, I found uh, uh, I found myself saying yes to understanding Tulsi's emotions there what her needs were in a way which was deep which was very powerful and I felt myself oh my god how much I hurt uh, my wife that way So I remember uh, saying yes to her uh, for something which she had in her mind for a very very long time, and uh, I, when I came back, I, 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 that was in UK. So when I came back, and Tulsi was here in India. When I came back home, I still remember the picture very clearly. She opened the door, and I hugged her. and with my and and said to her like i held her for a long time there and said to yes to what she wanted in her life as a so that moment was something which i would say uh, came from the deep it uh, connected um yeah so i have a, a number of moments but that even today if i look back it's a very clear picture of uh how i helped to see and how to see help me and uh, yeah then the story is very different after that of course we thin the words that yes so yeah that's that one moment it stands out for me like it's a turning point like that there are, i have a, a lot of touching points yeah it's beautiful uh, yeah, thank you for uh, for asking yeah yeah thank you thank you so much for asking such a powerful such a powerful story i mean we all have that one moment that and I, I, hang on abhishek i'll tell you all the more i think yes please primarily uh, primarily the reason i'm saying that is primarily between husband and wife a lot of things are taken for granted because the relationship is so so um, strong that i i somewhere i would say the women of the house is much more flexible when compared to the men uh sorry guys <laughs> uh that okay no way <laughs> yeah they choose to accept uh whatever the man uh, the, the man of the house says and uh, when tulsi has had been asking for something which was important for her in her life 
how I chose to conveniently say no to it logically. No, 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 no. It's not good for you. It's not good for your health and all this stuff. And push it back. And and because I had a lot strong logical decision, I pushed it back completely. Uh, not willing to hear her. Uh, so it was like uh, not one willing to understand her emotions and needs. And I think primarily in a relationship which is oh, for a long time together, the people just leave it. But for me, uh, just to realize that I was actually hard on her and uh, she chose to accept me the way I was. Um, and just to, just to, so I think I'm very fortunate I had uh, my coaches, my teachers who helped me understand that connect to Tulsi's feeling. And then coming back and I holding her and saying yes to it. Um, it's like, uh, me bowing down and saying, hey, for you, darling, anything is, yeah, that kind of stuff. And that was a huge learning for me. Can I, just because I'm a relationship, just because I'm married for the last 27 years, do I take my relationship for granted or do I, or do I value it? So I think that was important for me, I would say. Yeah. So thanks for asking that question, Papa. Beautiful. And uh, we know what you're talking about. At least, uh, uh, to an extent, uh, I uh, kind of resonate with the story and uh, it'll be amazing if the audience also know what exactly you're talking about. <laughs> and if you can see the result once, just a high from her also would be great. Oh, she's gone to bed already. Ah, okay. <laughs> she, she, she is uh, up. Uh, so normally she we don't let her sleep in the afternoon yes so she has been up from 11 30 onwards but by 7 7 30 she goes off to bed so yes. i'm sure she's already gone to bed but if i if she's, if she's going to be here then then the call goes for a toss we can be rest assured <laughs> uh, sir is talking about gayantika his lovely lovely daughter uh, so Gantika, and, Gantika, yeah, of course, you can say Abhishek, you can say that. Let me, let yeah. me check, yeah, you can give the background how Gantika came, I'll come back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gantika is his lovely, lovely daughter. Uh, uh, and uh, when, uh, for, for the very first time I was at uh, his workshop, NLP workshop, Tulsi Ma'am and he was there and uh, Tulsi Ma'am was conceived uh, with uh, Gantika and uh, she, they were talking, uh, Ramesh was actually sharing the story. After around 22, 23 years, they had Gantika and it's just a mind-blowing story. Hello. And she was born on a silver, silver Jubilee. Silver Jubilee. She was born on your yeah. Silver Jubilee. And how old is she, sir, right now? Two years and five months. So, it's been that many years since I attended his workshop. So, yes. <laughs> that is my time check. <laughs> Gayatika yes, is my time check as to yes, how long yes, has it been yes. since uh, introduction as uh, of me in NLP. Such a such a powerful story. She was born at your twenty fifth wedding anniversary. She was yes. a gift. She was yes. a gift, and it took twenty five years to understand a relationship. And uh, uh, and you go on to say, and you want to reduce that time for as many people as possible. And I'm sorry to say, we uh, we kind of misunderstand not just romantic relationships, a lot of relationships. Friendship, we take it for granted. Relationship with our parents, we take it for granted. A lot of relationships are taken for granted. Just to hear them out, just to hear them out will reduce a lot of time. Thank you so yeah. much, Opa, for asking that question. Um, and I don't want to move on from here. Such a beautiful story. Uh, uh, Prashant asks, if not for NLP, then what would Ramesh be doing? <laughs> I maybe I'll have become a monk. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Who's a monk according to you? A monk is somebody who. So I'll tell you what I experience. I uh, there are of course. Um, so when I stepped into the space of change, when I found my calling, when I found answers to all those questions. Uh, so, it's like people build the careers, right? The graph goes like that. So, a lot of things come along. And uh, then you realize that you don't want all this stuff. Wow. Yeah. And, um, 
So, but do I have the ability to let go of it? So I did crazy things, Abhishek. Uh, you are actually kindling a lot of my old thoughts. So I did crazy stuff. I I I I remember after the the workshop which I attended with uh, Sunait and Ashok. Those were my initial days uh, where I spent. The more I spent time in that space, I started to become very spiritual inside. My father, who was no more, wanted me to be uh, uh, following his footsteps. Uh, but somehow, being a convent educated guy, had always dismissed it. Uh, and uh, the more I began to find my calling in that space of uh, the unknown, uh, one of the things which I began to practice, and thank God, because I stopped working, the money stopped. So one of the things which I started doing was to start letting go. Of. So, and I we started doing crazy things. I let go of my car. Uh, can I live without a car? I, I can I and I live in Chennai, which is primarily humid and hot. So I let go of my air condition. Can I live without my air condition? I was staying in the topmost floor and it's really hot. So, so I let go of my bed, um, real my, my real cushion bed, which was like a wooden bed and a mattress. So can I just sleep on the floor? Uh, so like that, I let. Uh, in fact, I had to see support very importantly. Can I live life with nothing? Can I live life zero? Zero is a good number. It teaches you a lot. And um, so the more I started to let go of and explore things uh, very differently uh, in my initial days, I felt connected uh, to Mother Earth in such a way that I had never been connected. Just to see the sun rising or to admire the beauty of what Mother Earth was offering to me. Um, it's like, I remember when I let go of my car and started traveling in a bus, for me, Chennai looked very different, like, oh my God, this is how things are, okay. Uh, so deliberately chose to do what uh, I hadn't done for a long time in my life, because money brought in a lot of stuff. But can I let go of, can I live without nothing was something which I practice. That uh, made me much more humble and uh, I started reading books which uh, my father wanted me to read and which were more spiritual books. So to me, if you were to say, I began leaning on that and Tulsi, Tulsi was scared that I would go away in a different direction. So, <laughs> so I think, yeah. Um, I didn't think that way, but yeah, to me, somebody like that who is able to find his calling and if there is a connection to the unknown, and then he he doesn't and doesn't hold so, does like uh, can uh, live life as it comes with, with almost nothing minimal if need be or nothing. So yeah, to me that he is a mom, he or she is a mom, and I think. So that definition, that beautiful explanation of being a monk in your very own words can be something that we can practice on our own without calling ourselves monk itself. Because from yeah. if at all we have to put all of what you said in two, three words, you simply spoke about minimalism, you simply spoke about practicing self-awareness. Yeah to yeah. what do I really, really want. So a monk yeah. is not a person who necessarily roams around in a robe, a person who yeah. simply asks a simple question saying, no. is this me? Is this a person? Yeah. I would say no, no, no. A monk is not somebody who wears a robes or yeah. something. Like that. Yeah. I think all of us have that in within us. Yes. And I find, and, and I find Abhishek, what surprises me is today, a lot of young people, a lot of yes. young people, who are just in their teens uh, are connecting to the unknown as like never before. What yes. I grew up in an environment where we would be taught all this is when you are beyond 50 or 60 or something like that. But today I'm surprised that uh, a lot of young people are highly knowledgeable. They, their ways of connecting with the unknown is uh, very inspiring, I should say. And uh, when sometimes some of them, when they come to my platform, I love to learn from them. Like, hey, yeah. So Jaya says, yes, true. Yeah, yeah absolutely true. Absolutely true. 
and uh, the no no better person than you to say this that practicing self awareness is a key and age is simply not a factor like you yeah. said you are learning from younger people and to the younger audiences over there who are listening to this would probably listen to this in various other platforms self awareness is a practice that does not know age uh it can start as early as uh, i don't know teenage i don't know from the beginning because um self awareness is the only way we we uh, live a blissful uh, and a happy life so one last question to uh, or a couple of last two three questions that we kind of can sum up with because we cannot get enough of you right um one question that a lot of people have asked in various different shades uh maybe you can answer it answer it in the simplest way a lot of times you mentioned nlp nlp what is nlp and who what and where all can it be used um i'll say a little bit about it because i do know there are a lot of young audience most of your friends are there yes have you shared anything with them as to what is nlp so when whenever they ask me i don't go into the text of definition i simply say nlp is the language we speak with our own self oh that's all excellent that's all excellent yeah <laughs> so the technical definition of nlp is it's a study it's a study eh? it's a study of um subjective experience so here you are the subject i am the subject so it's a study of how am i doing what am i doing particularly it's a study of excellence ha huh, i like the way abhishek coming online and uh, and and engaging in such a way which is highly interactive i am not very sure whether i can do what uh, abhishek does uh, but i love to do in fact love to do what he does but can i do what he does uh, yes you can do it and uh, and uh, the fact is that's where nlp come So a lot of people would say no 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 that's very simple you follow these three steps or four steps which is like how uh if you take the book uh, of Stephen Covey there's a very famous book of Stephen Covey it's yes. called seven habits seven habits of highly effective people yes so he tells you all that and what he doesn't tell you how do you develop yep. those seven habits yes so or we say begin with the end in mind yes how do i begin with the end in mind when the definition of beginning itself is non clear where do we begin where do we end so so the fact is all this has a structure so you are studying primarily the structure of uh, excellence which is at an unconscious level so nlp is the study of um, subjective experience subjective excellence i would say so we don't go by the fact that this is a good behavior or a bad behavior if you like what you are doing and say wow i like this what he is doing is producing this result can i reproduce those results yes you can so i'll tell you a little bit more on that um, so about 30 35 years ago there were two crazy guys who came together to study how is that in any field a few people are highly successful and these guys studied exemplars who were good with people they studied people who were in the business of people and uh, they studied for example a family therapist a, a, a hypnotherapist and so on and the science which came out of that study is called as neuro linguistic programming with the belief that if he is successful can i also be successful yes you can be successful is there a structure to it is there a science to it yes there is a structure and science to it that's how nlp started off i would say and uh, that's 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 is where it it leads to primarily at a very surface level like you said abhishek it's a study of how if you break down the jargon neuro linguistic programming neuro is something to do with your brain uh, and you use your brain primarily to think so that's uh, the question asked is do you know how you think if i ask you do, uh, I, you might say me what am i thinking or what are you thinking but if i ask you do you know how you think yeah so the study of how i think how one thing i would say similar to take the word linguistic it's all about language uh, language to self language to others and that's a big word it's not about hindi english tamil malayalam it's about when you when you decide to communicate with the world um what are what are your language pattern do people respond to you do people react to you uh, how is that in some places you are able to connect and some people the places you uh, you find it challenging to connect so you become aware of your language patterns right 
Uh, I would say primarily in a relationship like at a, like a home at home your mother or your father recognize your language pattern they know that it's not you but they do not know there is a science to it so when you come to an NLP program you know the science of how you communicate as well programming is of course a computer word like how it is borrowed from the computer word and like how a computer has been programmed similarly the belief here is that uh, you and I are also some kind of programs a better word would be strategies yes so so nlp is a study of how one thinks one speaks uh, one behaves uh, one runs of their own beliefs and values in line with the whatever they want in life so if you're running strategy like for example we came together online there was definitely a strategy drawn for it the question here is does this strategy is working for you like the 21 day strategy which you're running to go online to connect uh, to to the people whom you know to the world so you're running a strategy so like that something very very simple in your daily life you and i are running strategies yes so the question here is are these strategies working for you or not working for you so you're exploring all the stuff i would say in a, uh, an opportunity for you to explore reflect and then arrive at decision so that's at a very surface level what's an energy there's a lot but i think that's enough for now yeah there is there is a lot and you can dedicate your lifetime learning about it practicing it and some of the world's top successful people practice it including tony robbins uh, robin sharma uh, deepak chopra all of these guys practice nlp on a very very intense and a deep level uh, and a lot of hypnotherapists use it lot of mentalists and magicians use it a lot of actors use it they don't say it but they use a lot of nlp based techniques uh, so you should definitely check out at least what nlp is and do attend ramesh prasad's workshops because uh, he's someone who kind of put a reverse gear to my life and kind of changed a lot of things uh, for especially for me because i was this person who was just like everywhere sort of funnel the tools that he gave the one week that i uh, opra opra yes opra will free too a lot of people are using nlp and uh, just check out uh, ramesh prasad's programs probably at the end of this particular question i will ask him where to find him you can definitely find him there and uh, run and apply for his workshops so one last question i would ask you is simple what is that one question that you ask yourself every single day um what is that one question which i ask myself every single day so which is what i had shared and i think you put it out there um so primarily uh, i am in the space where i study behaviors human behaviors but when you talk about human behaviors we can study using a lot of metrics uh, all the stuff which is what people do uh, and can become very complex another way is uh, the way i do is uh, by keeping it as simple as conversational as possible and uh, picking up uh, on how somebody does what they do but before before we go on to all the stuff i always ask myself okay how is that i am doing what i'm doing yes so the question is where am i where am i like this what am i doing and how am i doing beautiful so i think these are the three questions that pops up all the time so even if i'm running a course or even if i'm with my daughter or with my wife okay where am i what am i doing how did i do how did i respond how did i come about like like for example i'm sure one of the thing which i will do and you might do also even after the show okay how did it come about yes so you have to reflect and to see what was the effect of what is did did it reach a larger audience did it touch people did it no it's not larger audience did it reach the audience did it connect even if you have a small group of people did they take away something was i coming about in a way which connected with them i think those are the some of the question which i like i know that i have said a lot of there's a lot of question in those questions so yeah i'll pause yes this. <laughs> yes yes and that's what ramesh does to you guys he asks you questions he asks you the right questions and where am i what am i doing how am i doing a lot of people are sharing their experiences jaya is sharing her experience opanika is sharing her experience do read out i'll uh, i wish to share something abhishek here yes please sir, please um 
so what i'm beginning to because coming online live like this uh, is something which uh, i've been doing off late yes like you mentioned about uh, i'm good at asking questions but my way of asking question is for people to explore find answers bring in awareness bringing in awareness of some of their patterns language behavior with those intentions um i do find it very difficult i'm using the word difficult when when people ask me question it's a learning for me in a huge way because i'm choosing to share a part of me which i've been doing now for almost one year but i still find it oh my god like that way uh let i'm choosing to share a part of me opening up and sharing um and these are questions which are very raw um, very raw. so just yeah so facing this question answering this question and um what i also uh, uh, i'm beginning they, they are not they are not those kind of questions or answer which is coming from here but it is coming from here and i'm choosing to share from here as always i say so i just allow uh, and and whenever i choose to share from here i find they are very deep very powerful so for me just to be having this conversation itself is uh, okay i'm on the other side you're asking me questions and i'm answering and uh, can i answer in such a way uh where i'm speaking from my heart so yes. that's what i yeah. yes thank you so much uh, and i uh, and i'm heartfelt uh, uh, namaskarams to you gurubhyo namaha began if i'm wrong in anything if i asked you any uh, questions that went a little bit offline i'm really sorry uh, please forgive me like or uh, how ram forgive uh, forgive hanuman uh, when the time he stamped on him and flew away so uh, it is an honor to uh, bring my guru uh, on uh, the little show that i'm trying to put out because i feel that uh, we we resonate in the fact that we all are trying to make human beings and human emotions and human living experience just a little bit better just a little bit thank you thank you abhishek thank you very very much and thank you guys for joining in vishal sopa prashant and uh, mr uh i don't know there's a lot of people who came and went in now oh. yeah but yeah. Oh, yeah oh yes where can we find you where can we find you sorry forgot that question where can we find you where can we sign up for the questions is there anything coming up that we can sign up for so like i said uh, watch for some of the work which i am doing online on facebook you can find me so my name is ramesh ramesh prashant r ramesh prashant and uh, i have a brand called one fluencer <laughs> yeah so i thought it is right one correct fluencer. perfect timing yeah. when you said the research came <laughs> yeah so um so yeah i would say you can uh, so my name has it in fact my id insta insta id has uh, uh, one fluencer ramesh so if you go to onefluencer.com uh, that should be enough to as the beginning i would say so uh, insta live says 20 seconds remaining thank you so much for being here and uh, catch us live every day at-